Hey, this is Charlie with 4BZ Truth. Um, I just wanted to give an update. I've been trying to do a bunch of stuff in my life that has prevented me from getting involved in making YouTube videos for a little bit. Um, I'm actually still very passionate, still always talking to people, evangelizing, trying to get people to think deeply and um, think about how they approach information what they define as truth and uh, why it's important to analyze things uh, f from the deepest level to down to the root um, I've been always thinking of you know different positions on reality um, you know I've been thinking a lot about flat earth and why this is one of the deeper concepts that I've uh, invested my time in. In fact, it's been so deep, I've consumed myself for the last two years plus. And uh, I give the credit to Rob Skiba on that in the sense that he um, was someone I uh, admired and looked up to as far as his uh, content uh, with like the Nephilim and you know, the corrupted seed and things like that. Um, I actually, um, I was about to write him off. And of course, um, you know, condemnation before investigation is the height of ignorance. So why, um, why would I reject what he was saying without having something to prove him wrong? So that, I, everybody has the same testimony from what I can tell um, as far as what they were able to uh, come up with in trying to prove the flat earth wrong now granted there are people there um, that would say that they have good evidence f against it I have yet to find have anybody come to me and tell me what is false about flat earth or maybe what's true about the globe earth but um the thing uh, about it is i have uh, my own doubts that prevent me from fully investing myself as a flat earther um it's the science that appeals to me Anything that I uh, have been looking at um, that can support one way or the other, I, I'm in favor of. Really, ultimately, what it comes down to is I support truth. You know, if people are going to say, oh, you have your own truth, I have my own truth. It's one of the more ignorant things you could say because, you know, some people should take a step back and realize that they are so biased in their own perspective that they don't consider other options you know the you know they'll, they'll say you know the best examples i can think of are my neighbors who either despise uh organized religion to the point where they don't consider the possibility of god existing um or they'll create their own God in their mind. Um, and that same person actually will say that the flat earth is not possible because he knows that curvature doesn't actually reveal itself through the human eye, but it is bending light. So it would actually meet our eye after bending over the curvature. And it appears to be flat because light you're actually following the the path of the light and the light follows the path of the curve <laughs> so any this is the only argument that i've heard from anybody that has actually um represented their position of the globe now i've heard other people say oh it's compelling but i it's not enough evidence to convince me um to to go into the flat earth camp you know, regarding conversations that are actually rational, because 
most of the other people obviously are like trolls or something where you don't have a rational conversation with somebody. But like I, I've talked to my brother who is very, you know, deep thinker and he, he actually gave it a second glance when I was showing him some of the stuff. But he still isn't willing to, you know, say this is a worthy venture to, to pursue. Now, there are things that kind of throw me for a loop still. You know, I was watching this show called Alone. It's where those people are out uh, secluded in like uh, on an island or um, just in the wilderness by themselves trying to survive. And uh, they were in Patagonia. I, I don't know what what uh, season this was, but it, I th it was one of the more recent seasons. And um, they were in South America, and if if they were indeed in the area where they're in the Southern Hemisphere, according to the Flat Earth, you have... Um, you don't see the same kind of star trails as you would in um, the northern hemisphere. Like if you were looking straight at the North Star Polaris, um, it would have uh, Polaris in the middle and the star trails that go around uh, that center point. Now, it wouldn't work the same if, if you're in the southern hemisphere at least I don't understand at this point how that would work. Um, I have to admit, there, there's there been some people that I've been listening to that are very compelling. Like, uh, Planate Veritas. I, I'm just going to throw that name out there because that, that guy seems... Um, I want to say his name's Robert Milano or something. He, he uh, is extremely thought-provoking because he, he has brought up like the, the satellites that are you know lifted on to weather balloons and or not just weather balloons but gigantic helium or um, what do you call that uh, well you know the, the balloons that lift them up into the atmosphere and a lot of them are being uh, put up in Antarctica and sometimes they've crashed down into areas where um, people weren't supposed to see them and it's like what the heck the satellite just fell from the sky um, but it was on a hot air not a hot air, hot air balloon but a um, a weather balloon so you know, the, those are the kind of things that's like, wait, it's possible that there are satellites up there, but how are things drifting across the sky at night? I went camping, like, I don't know, a month or two ago, and I saw like four or five different little floater stars that look like they could be considered satellites go in a completely different direction than the normal, you know, the regular stars. But I, I, I hear those arguments where how are you going to see a, something the size of a car like a thousand miles away or whatever it is when you can barely see a, a 747 with your naked eye, naked eye. So it's like the, those are the kind of things that I'm like scratching my head still, you know. Flat Earth is is hard to you know fully thrust myself into head first, but if if you want to use the Bible as as your you know to push you over the edge, I believe the Bible does support that cosmology. You know, I think there's enough within the Bible that says that, unless you're going to look at everything like an allegory, but that's. That's kind of choosing your own path to your own truth. It's going back to that thing where people are like, uh, you know, you have your truth and I have mine. Well, you know, how are you going to interpret the information? You know, the, this is the crux of what I'm trying to get at. 
I was I've been talking to a guy at work and he's uh, an LDS Latter Day Saint, and you got a lot of those guys over here in Boise, Idaho. I don't know, probably fifty percent of the population is Mormon, but I, I don't know. He's the one of the more authentic people that I've ever met, and. Um, You know, how are you going to shoot somebody down that had a, a an experience that is, you know, so, maybe not authentic, but his heart is so authentic that I, it's hard for me to say how, how far grace actually goes. Because, like, at what point does grace, you know, let you go as a, a sheep that's astray? So you, if you're if you're lost sheep, then you're lost. But or if you're astray, are you a prodigal son? Where the you're still a son, you're still somebody who is considered part of the family, still eligible for the inheritance. So if you think about it from the terms of you have people that are fully invested into this belief system, at what point does truth become truth, and at what point does this deception become deception? Well, truth is a little bit easier because it is what it is, but at what point does some the, you know, the corrupted loaf, so to speak, the yeast, how, when does the yeast start corrupting the loaf? And there's so many things to consider, so many variables. But I think of salvation. I've always thought about how people, everybody has the truth, right? Everybody has their own form of truth. And... This is where I, I get into the philosophical roots. What is the you know where where does truth fundamentally start? And I think it comes back to you know P Planet Veritas. It's not what you can. It's not what you know, but it's. It's what you can prove. And, you know, I, I think you should hold everything up to scrutiny as much as you possibly can because unless you're putting things to the fire, how are you going to be refined as a person if you're not being held to the fire? You know, things don't hold up to scrutiny if if you're not being challenged. And that's how we weather the, weather the storms. We become more, you know, <laughs> I was going to say self-aware, but we become more ingrained in our, uh, I don't want to say ingrained in our ways because you know, that's when you can say, I operate from my bias, or my presupposition, or my philosophical perspective. But, you know, it seems like you have to interpret everything through some filter of understanding. You have to. Without understanding how to interpret something, then you'll probably never be able to discern information or you know decode it in your mind there's a there's patterns to reality that you have to follow so i want to keep talking but i'm about to hit 15 minutes on this video and i don't want to make it take forever and at this point but the, these are some of the talking points that i wanted to get at and i wanted to shout out to my my good friend aaron the mormon I think that he is authentic, and I'm going to expand this uh, topic of religion here shortly. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.